Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Personal Growth Project podcast. This is actually my first video episode and the audio is going to be kind of bad this week because I'm still waiting on the adapter that I need to connect a mic to my camera. But I wanted to make some video episodes for you guys. Not all of them can be videos, but I wanted to make some videos because firstly I feel like it's such a great way to really make the podcast more personal. And secondly, I just think that it will also help me grow my reach on YouTube and hopefully reach more people. So I'm very excited to be bringing this to you today. We are going to get into a listener requested topic, which is how to break your social media addiction. I have been there. I have been addicted before, especially because I have ADHD and although I'm medicated, Sometimes when my medication wears off at the end of the day or when I've just woken up, it's so easy for me to get in a scrolling loop. And I know that like with TikTok and Instagram and all the other platforms we have today, it's literally so, so, so easy to just want to be on social media all the time. And it's kind of sad because social media is something that really brings us no benefits in our personal lives. And I know you may be arguing with me on this and you may say, well, Abigail, I talk to a lot of friends on social media. I'm going to be blunt with you. Those probably aren't high value people. Because if the main outlet for you talking to your friends or connecting with your friends is social media, that means that your friends are people who are chronically online probably not successful. If you want to meet successful people, you have to realize that they are not going to be constantly on social media. That's not where you're going to really find those kinds of people. Like if you're having DM exchanges back and forth with friends or maybe guys that you're interested in, you need to realize that they're probably not going to be people who are going to be lifting you up and helping you become a more successful person. The first piece of advice I honestly have for you is just to deactivate your Instagram account if you have Instagram. Instagram is the main social media that I know most people have. And if you want to really break your addiction to social media, you need to just bite the bullet and deactivate for a bit, just so that you can get used to not having it you have to kind of go cold turkey on it. And then when you bring it back in your life, then you can do so with boundaries set. But you need to start by just taking a break. And this doesn't have to be a punishment. You should instead think of it as like a little challenge or something, you know, cool that you're doing for your self-improvement. Um, I mean, think of it. That's such a main character thing to do, deleting your social media. It kind of makes you cool in that way. I mean, to me at least. When I see people deleting their Instagram, I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Like, I'm actually happy for those people. I think it's cool. So genuinely, the best place to start is by deactivating. You don't have to delete. Instagram allows you to deactivate your account. I think indefinitely, and whenever you log in, it restores everything, all your conversations, all your pictures, everything. It's just as if you never left. Now, when you deactivate, if you do have close friends on there, I would advise telling them because before I have caused quite the controversy by deactivating my account without telling anyone. And when you deactivate your account, it will actually show that your account no longer exists when people try to message you, which is actually the same thing that Instagram will show people when you've blocked them. So if you want people to not get mad at you, I would highly suggest telling them that you haven't blocked them, but you just deactivated your Instagram. Because I deactivated my personal Instagram and I had been kind of talking back and forth with a friend Admittedly a low value friend, not really a great friend, um, which is really the only way to preface this story because you will quickly see how they're not a good friend. Um, but we'd kind of been sending each other things back and forth, no deep conversations or anything, um, but just shallow conversation. And then I decided that I was deactivating my Instagram, um, I think near the end of September this year best decision ever. I'll get into that later. But anyway, I deleted my Instagram one night, did not look back, and I noticed they stopped talking to me at school. And I was like, that's kind of weird. I mean, we normally talk. 
but they completely stopped talking to me. Um, and so I have a podcast Instagram account in addition to my regular Instagram account. It's called Personal Growth Project Official. I'll try to put it here when I edit. And so they followed my podcast account and they usually liked some of my posts. Actually, no, they were a bad friend, so they really didn't. But they would occasionally, like I'd see them in my story views, right? Well, after I deactivated my account, I just had this gut feeling oh my gosh, like this happened a week later. I was like, wait, maybe they thought that I blocked them. And I had this feeling that they unfollowed my podcast account. I don't know why I had no proof, but it was just a gut feeling. So I pulled my phone out and I searched their name in the followers box, gone. I searched their name in the search box now, also gone. Not only had they assumed that I blocked them and unfollowed my podcast as Petty Revenge, they blocked me entirely on Instagram. And so this just goes to show, one, you should have higher standards with friends. Please go for friends that communicate well with you. Um, because after that incident, I did smooth it out with them because I felt kind of bad about the fact that they were walking around thinking that we had beef when we really didn't. Um, but after I smoothed it out with them, I was just so unimpressed by the fact that instead of communicating with me, like, you know, a rational and mature human being, they automatically jumped to petty revenge and making assumptions that quite honestly could have like completely ended our friendship. Um, we're still not back to where we were and I don't think we ever will be because I don't really want to like have people in my life that have that petty energy going on but we probably never would have spoken again had I not addressed that and so this is all just to make the point a very long example to make the point that you should communicate with people when you go ghost on social media because some people nowadays do expect a response to everything which stinks and is one of the reasons why you should actually delete your social media. Um, but so yeah, start with deactivating your Instagram account. Tell people that you're deactivating. Here are the benefits to this. One, you will be so much more confident. I still have my business Instagram account, which is for promoting my podcast, posting self-improvement things. You should definitely go follow it. Um, but my personal account was filled with people that I followed from school, um, various self-improvement influencers, etc. And now I try to only follow people like self-improvement influencers who actually bring me value. But somewhere along the way, I started following a bunch of people from my school. And although I'm very picky with who I follow, like I'll only follow people who I actually vibe with. I'm not going to like pretend to be a fan of people I dislike. Um, but still, I was seeing all kinds of stories every day when I had Instagram of people at my school going out and having fun. Everyone's at the football game smiling together. You know, everyone's going out to concerts. It made me feel, even though I love my life, it made me feel dissatisfied. And I love what I do. I love going home and I love studying. I love creating content. I love working hard because that's what I need to do in this stage of my life. I do not need to be going out to football games and, you know, going to concerts with people because one, there are not a lot of like-minded people at my school, unfortunately. So if I were to do that, I would be hanging out with people who really don't uplift me or bring me to a better version of myself, which is bad and I don't want that. And secondly, it's just like, there's no reason for me to feel like there's no reason for me to feel unsatisfied with my life when I already have so much going for me. Like, you know, lifestyle choices aside, I have food to eat, I have clothes to wear, you know, I have a beautiful house to live in, etc. But as soon as I'd open social media, I would get this sense of FOMO and I would feel like my life wasn't good enough the way it was which is really sad considering how lucky I am to live in this day and age and have everything I have. I deleted Instagram and I no longer had to see everyone's stories and everyone having fun. And I felt so much better about my life ever since. Now I love my life and I loved it before, but 
you know, I'd be having a good day, I'd be feeling good about myself because I would be on top of my to-do list, then I'd open Instagram and I'd automatically feel so much anxiety. It was like this sense of crippling comparison to other people. Even though I was doing the right thing and I was on the right lane in life, I would open Instagram, see people doing something different, and then start to wonder whether I was doing the right thing even though the path that I was on was the right one for me. And that comparison can really mess you up in terms of productivity, motivation, loneliness, as I said, huge thing. You start to feel lonely when you constantly see people having fun, even if you have good friends. I had great friends, like, you know, I don't have many friends at my school or in my hometown, um, but the ones that I do have are good people, like genuinely supportive people who I can genuinely talk to things about and trust. And though there are only, I think there are only two people who really um, meet that standard for me in my hometown, but I do have a lot of friends online who are other content creators and entrepreneurs who are just amazing people to talk to. Um, and I have an incredible community of friends online as well, and also supporters online, and so I really should not feel lonely, but as I said, Instagram can easily make you feel lonely even if you already have enough in terms of a social life and friends to talk to. So finally, your body. Your body is one thing that Instagram and other social media apps will make you feel really bad about. And I'll try to move on from Instagram because I know I've been talking about it for a while. Um, but. Instagram genuinely is just filled with people who edit their pictures. Seriously. You would not believe the amount of editing that goes on um, with influencers and even people who you think are supposed to be authentic are usually not authentic. I will even admit that sometimes when um, I'm posting a video to my personal growth project Instagram, sometimes if I have like a super bad zit, I will actually go in and I'll kind of up the smooth face feature. I might even do it for this video, but I will be transparent about that because I want you to know that because of, you know, the pressure to look good on social media, a lot of us do fall into that trap of editing. And I've never used filters. I've, I've never used filters or like done anything to drastically alter my appearance. The only thing I'll do is like, um, kind of smooth my skin, um, but I know there are a lot of influencers who do use filters and who do warp their body. And you should know that it is incredibly easy for people to edit videos of themselves nowadays if you didn't already know. You know, you may think that you're seeing something authentic because someone posted it on their story, um, but no, no. Almost everything can be edited and even if it says that there's no filter applied to something. Um, people can literally just put filters on things, then download them to their phone and re-upload it to Instagram, and it will show that there's no filter added, even though there's a filter there. So you should be aware of the fact that the people you're comparing yourself to on Instagram might not even be real. They might not even look like that. Um, there's this hilarious podcaster uh, called Leo Skeppy, I think. I'm not sure how to say his last name. Um, but he made this hilarious episode on influencers that I'll try to link below if I remember. And he was talking about how these gym influencers that, you know, you see all over your feed are usually, like, shorter than they appear in their videos and, like, not all that. And it just cracked me up. Um, because there's so many people who genuinely, like, have masses of fans completely deceived. Um, I know there was a popular gymnast, hmm, I think her name's Olivia Dunn, and I saw a TikTok where they found that she, like, massively photoshopped her pictures, um, and it was just so alarming because not only was, like, her body like massively photoshopped, she shrunk her rib cage in, she even edited her hair, like her ponytail, to look a different way. Um, it, it just, no, I'm sorry, like you cannot be comparing yourself to those people who are constantly editing. It's not healthy for you. So 
you need to deactivate your Instagram. Just get off of there. It's so toxic. Now I need to move on to something else before you lose your mind listening about Instagram. The next tip I have for getting off of social media, now that you're hopefully off of Instagram, is to, for the other social media apps, set time limits. And there are two apps that I really like to use for this. One of them is called Your Hour and the other is called Stay Free. And both of them basically have the same functionality, so I'm not sure why I have both. But I know Your Hour is an app that allows you to set time limits for your different apps. I know, I think Apple has a built-in um, feature for this too, but I have an Android. So I use Your Hour on my phone. And I set a 15 minute time limit on both Instagram and TikTok. Um, this is so huge because look, if you don't set a time limit on TikTok, I know it is so easy to scroll and scroll and scroll because there's literally no set endpoint. Um, with a book for entertainment, you know when it's ending because like you can look and see how much of a chapter you have left, but there is no set endpoint to TikTok which is why it's so easy to just keep going and going and going. So set a time limit using one of those apps. There's a super helpful feature in your hour where you can also, in addition to the time limit, make it so that you can't adjust any of the app settings um, after you've already like expired your time limit. So if you go like 15 minutes in one second and then you try to you know, give yourself more time by turning off the app lock, it won't let you until the next day. So like your settings are locked in until you wake up the next morning, which is really helpful because I know that before I've had apps that weren't that strict that I tried to use to control my phone usage. And so I would run past my time limit and then I would soon get in the habit of just going straight to the app and then unlocking the app. Um, like removing the time limit and that completely defeats the purpose so make sure that you're getting apps that are strict enough to allow you to really lock in your settings for the day. So the next tip that I have for you, if you're trying to break a social media addiction or a phone addiction, you have to replace it with something else. You know, in addition to just getting off the app like I suggest you do with Instagram and setting time limits, it helps to have something else to do in place of that which you are addicted to. And I would know this because I tried to break my phone addiction so many times in the past. Um, sophomore year, I started by just going cold turkey. So I would just like power off my phone or I would just lock it away in another room and I'd say, I'm not going to use it at all for the weekend. And sometimes it worked. But other times I would come back to my phone um, out of boredom or like, you know, I would get back on it after the weekend and I would be even more addicted because I felt like I was missing out on stuff and I had to catch up. Or I would just get back, like, I would find another way to distract myself. So even though I wasn't using my phone, then I would be so bored that I would go straight to the computer and I would just start looking up random things because I was bored. And that also did not bring me the productivity that I wanted. So I advise that you have a productive distraction. For me, and I think for you, the most helpful thing will always, always, always be reading because reading is just such an enjoyable thing for everyone. You know, you may be a self-improvement book type of person like me, or you could also be a fiction reader. Either way, there's something for absolutely everyone. So I don't want to hear excuses about this. Um, I know a lot of people will tell me like that they don't want to read because whenever I talk about reading, it's usually in the context of listening to self-improvement audiobooks or like literally just reading nonfiction self-improvement. Um, I rarely ever read fiction, but if that does not appeal to you, fiction is still an option. And there are plenty of good fiction books. If you're not the type of person who wants to read TikTok's trashy fiction recommendations, um, there are some books called classics. Maybe you should give them a try. I've found that classics are called classics for a reason because they're usually timelessly good. Um, I love Jane Austen if you're a girl you'll probably like Jane Austen. Her books are very, very wordy 
and difficult to read initially, but you get used to them. I would recommend that you read them with a dictionary by your side um, because there's so many words that I usually have to look up, but the stories are very good. I would start with Pride and Prejudice. Um, that's her most well-known one. And then if you're a guy, I mean, there are just so many classics that males love. Like, I know Sherlock Holmes, um, there are a million Russian authors, I don't know the names of them, but I know that there are a lot of classics written by Russian authors that, you know, just kind of have masculine stories about, like, I don't know, treasure, spies, war, etc. So if you're a guy, you can go for those kinds of fiction books. But I do really love self-improvement. And if you're like me, you also love self-improvement. So I would recommend, you know, if you haven't given self-improvement books a try, I would start with hmm, David Goggins' book um, is really good. He actually has two books. The first is called Can't Hurt Me, and I love it to death. It is a life-changing book. You will be so motivated. If you do get that book, I would recommend getting the audiobook because you can listen to it in the gym and you will go absolutely wild. Like, your motivation will be off the charts listening to that. He also has a new book, I think, called Never Finished. I also listened to the audiobook version of that. I loved it. I listened to it in the gym. I went crazy on the treadmill. Very good book. Another book I'd recommend... Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza is incredible, an incredible read. It changed my life. It is 100% like the type of book, yeah, if I could only recommend one book to people, it would probably be, you know, obviously the Bible or Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Both are just mm, so good. It's basically about how we're driven completely like 95% by our subconscious mind. And it is so hard to change because so many of our habits and, you know, thought patterns are automatic by this point. But breaking the habit of being yourself is all about how you can, you know, kind of go deep into your mind and through meditation and just being aware of the thought patterns that you have every day you can change those and you can completely like redesign a new identity if you're not happy with your life or who you are right now. I love that book to death. It absolutely changed my life. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. Other good books, Atomic Habits, if you're just into productivity, minimalism, that kind of thing. Another really good book actually completely related to getting off social media that I should have said first is Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. I read this book when I was a sophomore in high school, so that was like two years ago, and it totally inspired me to get off my phone. You must read this book. You have to read this book. It is so good. It will inspire you to not only just like detox from your phone, but also to learn how to set limits with using your phone and um, it has so many good tips for just getting off social media and getting off your phone. Um, amazing book. Five stars, 100% read it. So the next big tip that I have for you, I'll get into specific things that help you just generally reduce your phone usage. Turn your phone to grayscale. Go into the accessibility settings of your phone and you can easily turn it to black and white. And this makes it so much easier to not scroll on social media or get addicted because it's not as fun when you don't have all your bright colors. And the sad thing is that app developers want you to be addicted to your apps, so they intentionally use bright colors. Do you know any app icons that are gray? Probably not, because they want to use bright colors like, you know, bright blue for Twitter. Well. Twitter used to be bright blue, now it's black, but bright blue, you know, neon yellow for Snapchat, um, Instagram is super colorful. Yeah, they just love to use colors, generally speaking, because they make kind of the primitive part of your brain want to click on the app. So turn your phone to grayscale and the app companies can no longer control you. So the next big thing that I also recommend is just like, honestly, make it less fun for yourself. 
unfollow accounts that you're really addicted to. And I know that stinks, right? But genuinely, like if there is a creator whose content you binge watch or if Netflix or like, you know, um, Hulu is an issue for you, just delete the apps off of your phone. Another thing you can do to make it less fun and more difficult is just to log out of every social media platform when you're done using it. This makes it so that even if you're addicted to opening the app, when you open the app, then it's like another layer there to keep you from getting inside the app. And that resistance will make it so that you can really break your addiction because there's a whole extra step that you have to take in order to get to your dopamine. And a lot of us are lazy nowadays, unfortunately. And that extra step often is all it takes to break out of you know, that urge to use the app. Because sometimes you just need a moment, you know, to think, do I really want to open this app right now? And oftentimes you don't, you're just doing it out of instinct. So by logging out, then you're giving yourself that extra moment to reflect on if it's really worth it to log in and check your social media. So I hope that this episode was helpful. I mean, there are a million things that I could talk about regarding getting off of social media, but before I wrap up, I will go ahead and say that reducing my social media time has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. And for the longest time I was trying, but just couldn't consistently get it right. But now I am in a stage of my life where it is completely effortless. And I would say that definitely out of the tips in this video, the most helpful thing for you is going to be just finding something else to replace social media with. Because a lot of us are using it as a crutch when we get bored. And if you can find something else to entertain you in those moments, which was reading for me, I will go ahead and, um, before I end the video, I want to add, you should definitely get a Kindle if you want to make reading easier. Um, I got the Kindle Oasis last month and it has already changed my life. I read all the time, no desire whatsoever to use my phone because I just love reading on my Kindle. It feels just like you're using a phone because, you know, it has the same screen and everything, but there are no distractions of a phone and you can listen to audiobooks on your Kindle, you can, um, I mean, you can get so many books on here for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. It's just the best investment you can ever make. It is such a great way to break a phone addiction if you have one. But anyway, getting back to the conclusion of the video, I've been so much happier ever since I cut out social media for the most part. I barely use it nowadays. Sure, sometimes, like, I don't think there is a day when I don't use TikTok. Um, I'll probably use it for, like, five to ten minutes a day and I've gotten to a point where I can have that moderation and initially it can be good to go cold turkey and completely cut everything out if you don't know self-control but now I have gotten to a point where I can genuinely like not overdo it and that is the ultimate goal because yeah you would be missing out on some things if you couldn't have Instagram at all or TikTok but if you can just learn self-discipline, then it won't be a concern and you can enjoy both a productive life and also sometimes have a little bit of indulgence in social media. So I want you to be able to get to that point and it does usually start with a detox, but you can get to a point where you're balanced and you can enjoy both things without having to completely give up social media. So I hope that this podcast episode slash YouTube video helped you. And if you have any questions, um, you can leave them in the Q&A section of the podcast, or you can comment them below. As I said, the podcast Instagram is at Personal Growth Project Official. I will link it below. And also, you can find me on Twitter slash X at Abigail Lang, A-V-I-G-A-I-L-L-A-I-N-G. Very difficult name to spell. You can also find me on TikTok also under Abigail Lang. And that's it for this video, but I hope you all have an amazing week and thank you for watching slash listening.